So in this example, uh, we're given the circuit shown, and we're asked to find the power in watts supplied by the dependent source. So here is our dependent source here. And you can see it's dependent on uh, this voltage here, uh, Vx, right there. Uh, so what, first thing we can see then, let's just let's note down what we know. Uh, we know that the controlling voltage is Vx, and Vx, using Ohm's law, can be the resistance, which is 5 ohms, resistance times I, so it would be 5, and then we have our I defined here, so that's times I. So there's our an expression for our control voltage. So now we know there must be a voltage drop across our dependent source three times that. So it'll be three times Vx, right? And it'll be a minus since it's a drop, and so that will be uh, 15. Well, let's write it out. It'll be 3 times 5i, which will be 15i. So now we want to just do a uh, voltage loop calculation. We should be able to do that now that we know what the, the voltage drop across here is. So, uh, you know, we can just start wherever we want. So we'll start here going in uh, this direction and just calculate or add up the voltages. So when we do that, uh, first thing we encounter is the 10 ohm resistor. And so that will be, uh, excuse me, that will be 10 times I. All right, so then we continue around our loop and uh, we come to our dependent source here. And when we do that, uh, we already know we calculated that over, he over here. And so we know that that is 15i. And so again, we continue around the loop and we come to this component. And again, that's just gonna be Ohm's law resistance times current, so that will be uh, plus 20 times I. And finally, we come to our Vx term, which uh, you know, we've already defined there. And so when we do that one, uh, that one's it's again Ohm's law, it'll be plus 5I. And if we sum those up, they should equal to this final voltage source, uh, which will be uh, 20, 20 volts. Or we could have said minus 20 equals to zero, either way. So when we do that, um, we see that we can factor out an I, so that would be 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 5. That's all equal to 20. And that's going to be I times 50 equal to 20. So then I is going to be 20 over 50, which is 0.4 amps. So there's our current. Okay. So now we go back to uh, this equation here where we see what our voltage drop, uh, excuse me, not that one, this one where our voltage drop is across our dependent source. And so if we can now say that our voltage drop across our dependent source D is equal to 15 I. So that should be 15 times 0.4. And we multiply that out and that's going to be six volts, six volts. So now we can go back to our original power equation. So our power, remember, is voltage times current. So in this case, our power of the dependent source is going to be uh, the voltage drop across it, which is 6 volts, times the current that passes through it, which is 0.4 amps. And so we multiply that out, we should get 2.4 watts. So this is the power 
uh, that is supplied by our source. So since it's supplied, it should be negative. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're looking for. Power in watts by the dependent source.